If only we had a metering device that could adjust and open and close and keep the right amount of superheat for us. Well, I'm glad you asked because that's a thermostatic expansion valve. Some people call it a TXV, some people call it a TEV, but it's a thermostatic expansion valve and its job is to control within range, try to control the amount of superheat in the evaporator cool to open and close to keep the right amount of refrigerant boiling from a liquid to vapor. So we have the right amount of superheat through a compressor so we don't have liquid flood back and it opens so that we don't end up having too much superheat so we don't burn the compressor up. And ideally, we could also put in a TXV on the outdoor coil. And by doing that, we can also adjust the superheat outside so we can open and close to maintain the correct amount of superheat. Let's take a look. This has an external check valve. So when refrigerant is flowing this direction, this check valve is closed and the refrigerant has to be metered through our TXV and then onto our evaporator coil. But if refrigerant is going this direction, it goes through and pushes this check valve open. The refrigerant bypasses the TXV altogether and continues its flow the other way. So if it's going this way, the refrigerant, liquid refrigerant continues to flow. If it's going this way, this valve closes and it has to go through this TXV. Here we see this little chamber. This chamber is a check valve. So if refrigerant's flowing this way, if I get high pressure pushing this way, it's gonna push this check valve open and allow refrigerant to continue on bypassing this pin. So it allows for an internal check valve. Now when refrigerant flows this way, it pushes the little ball closed and refrigerant can't flow down. It can only go through our metering pin. But that's just a little check valve. It just simply opens and closes. So refrigerant flowing this way, it opens, bypasses. Refrigerant flows this way and it closes. It's an internal check valve. You can get these TXVs with or without them. Now you can have a TXV inside and also a fixed orifice outside, or you can have a TXV outside with a fixed orifice inside. What would be better is simply having the TXV inside and also outside, but they have to be facing in the correct direction. In this case, in the summertime, liquid refrigerant flows this way and it pushes up on this little ball valve, opening that little check valve, allowing the refrigerant to continue through all the way to the indoor meeting device like it's not even there. In heat pump mode, refrigerant's coming this other direction. And what it does is it pushes the ball into the hole here and that closes the check valve, allowing for the liquid refrigerant to be metered through the thermostatic expansion valve. And then we have saturation coming out where it's liquid and vapor mixture onto our evaporator coil. So flowing this way, it bypasses internally like it's not even there. And then flowing the other way, it comes through, the bypass shuts off, and then we start metering refrigerant. There's many different ways of doing this. Most manufacturers have a TXV kit you can install, while other manufacturers actually come with a TXV from the factory. Some TXVs have an external check valve, as we see here. As high pressure liquid refrigerant flows in this direction, it comes down this way, it flows through this gap, and with the spring pressure, it keeps this check valve closed. That means the refrigerant's forced through this metering device. We have a pressure drop. Low pressure saturated refrigerant travels through the evaporator coil, and this will also be low pressure. The low pressure and high pressure differential with the spring and this little Teflon seal keeps this check valve closed, preventing refrigerant from leaking by. When the system reverses and we have high pressure liquid refrigerant flowing in this direction, it overcomes the spring pressure allowing high pressure liquid refrigerant to bypass the meter device like it's not even there. So this won't even be used. The next question is, where are you gonna mount your sensing bulb? Well, I'm glad you asked. The real answer is always follow the manufacturer's instructions. RTF film, read the fabulous manual. But typically you're gonna mount your sensing bulb and your equalization tube where you're measuring superheat where it's always suction. Have we talked about anything in the past where it's always gonna be suction? Oh yeah, between the pipe of the three, all the way back to the suction accumulator, and from there all the way to the compressor. So I could mount my sensing bulb here if I wanted, or I could mount it here if I wanted, or here or here if I wanted. Any one of these locations, I could mount the sensing bulb where it's measuring the actual suction line temperature. Then we'd also mount the equalization tube where it's measuring that suction pressure somewhere near that same location. There's several little rules going into where you would mount it. You wanna follow the manufacturer's installation manual, the manufacturer of the TXP or the manufacturer the equipment to make sure you're following that correctly. But the idea is thinking that, hey, the sensing bulb should be where it's always going to be low temperature, low pressure superheated vapor because it's measuring superheat. And with that, you always know you have the right amount of superheat to protect your compressor. This is an external check valve, and this one is an internal check valve. You don't see capillary tubes much anymore for metering devices, but the check valve is still going to work the same way. 
Now this check valve works very similar to a fixed orifice piston metering device, except what's really different about this one is there's no hole. There's no orifice. There's no fixed orifice in it. It's just a solid piece of brass right there. Notice there's no hole in the center. There's nowhere for refrigerant to flow through or meter. Now on the other side, we still have that little Teflon ring, just like we did at the fixed orifice. But you can also see on the other side, there's also no hole. Now, as refrigerant is flowing in this direction, it shoves this check valve up into place. That little piece of Teflon is going to seal and no refrigerant can flow. It's going to force the refrigerant to go around this check valve. In other words, if it's going to be this capillary or a TXV, it's going to meter and then continue on to the evaporator coil. Then refrigerant turns the other direction, it's going to push this check valve out of place. And very similar to the fixed orifice meter device, it's going to flow around this check in those grooves, and it's going to be like it's not even there. It's just going to bypass that metering device all together. Very simple little operation, and there's many, many different types of these check valves out there. This is just one example of many. You're also going to see some self-contained units that only have one metering device. There is no check valve in that metering device whatsoever. In this mode, you can see we're in AC mode flowing from the outside to the inside coil, and it's just that one metering device. The sensing bulb is mounted on the true suction line, as well as the equalization or sampling tube. And again, there's no check valve in there whatsoever. As we reverse the heating mode, we're going from the inside coil to the outside coil, and because that sensing bulb is located on the true suction line, it's still measuring superheat so it's metering the refrigerant now as it's going to the outdoor coil that one single metering device is metering refrigerant either direction no check valves in there no bypasses it's metering either side if you notice though there's no true liquid line so it makes it almost impossible to use a liquid line filter dryer because there is no set liquid line now, I really want to thank J.D. Kelly with Student of HVAC for all of his work of making these really great pictures and graphics. I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you so much. Now, also, I have some other videos on TXVs uh, that go into much more detail, but I also want to put some links below Brian Orr as Craig with AC Service Tech, uh, and also put some links to some manufacturers such as Dan Floss and Sporlin and Emerson. They have really great classes just for their TXVs, and also the Engineering Mindset has a really great video on the TXV and how it opens. So check those videos out if you want to know more information specifically about the TXV. This is already covered it once. I'm not going to cover it again, but have a a great day next video eevs electronic expansion valves